Android fans, what are the primary reasons why you will never ever switch to an iPhone? If I'm paying for an expensive device, I'm going to be the admin. I can load APKs. Install Youtabad blocker app. I load the Youtabs ads. Edit, for those that are asking. Phone, download free ad blocker browser app and use that for Youtube. TV, side load SmartTube and next APK. Desktop, install Youtabad blocker extension with Google Chrome. 100% this. That and I worked for a buyer of Apple devices. They were the most arrogant company I've ever dealt with. Their staff lacked any empathy or ability slash wilderness to understand markets outside the USA. Frankly they were just pricks. I decided I'd vote with my wallet. One point Android has direct access to your phone's file explorer. Two point third party apps, not on the app store. Three point I like the UI better. One is definitely the strongest point for me. I like using my phone like a hand computer and I can't do that with Apple. Apple is too restrictive. One of the main reasons why I had decided to get an Android after having an iPhone was the fact that they forced me to use iTunes just to add music and videos onto my phone when it should be something that I can just simply copy and paste. I can turn my text bubbles to any color I like. This. I changed the background image on my Galaxy phone recently and it generated a color scheme for my texts based on the colors in the image. Also I can change the text background image. And I have text pop-ups that come up on screen with a little contact image so I can respond to texts or text recents from any app without using the notification bar. Price. Familiarity with Android platform. No other devices in my home are Apple so having just the iPhone would be a nuisance. I had an iPhone for work for a while and I hated it, never again. Can't believe how far down I had to come to find price. Also mind blowing is how many people are like yeah, but Samsung is the same price. Like, what? Why do people just assume that phones need to be flagship spec? For 98% of people who just message and flick through Instagram you do not need a 1000 US dollar phone. There are so many mid-range phones for one third the price of the flagships that do everything a vast majority of people will ever need. $300 used Pixel 4a 5G here. Does everything I need it to in a nice compact package and solid camera system on a biop plan. Reddit, web browsing, YouTube, and camera modes are basically what I need out of a phone. Universal back button. It's always there when and where I need it. I had an iPhone a long time ago and every app had its own back button in different locations. Yeah I couldn't do without it. There are many reasons I'd never switch but that is one of the, the deal breakers. Price. Vanced. Modded APK installs. Freedom. Install custom ROM. Have to say it again. Freedom. Vanced alone almost makes it for me. Shame Youtab slash Google flexed them too hard, and they had to abandon the project. Still working great though. No ads. No sponsor messages. No annoying intros or outros. If they hadn't fucked around with NFTs trying to monetize the app, I suspect all would have been fine and there wouldn't have been a CND from Google. Variety. I can get different phones in different styles with different functions with Android. I still have my old OnePlus 6T because it has an excellent camera and a light operating system, a modded version of Android, I believe. With Apple, you are stuck with a closed environment on a closed phone, only variation you get this if you buy a new one, and Apple makes damn sure to come out with a new phone every year, which I will admit many Android phone companies do now too. OnePlus 6T is the best phone I've ever had. Shame what happened to OnePlus. I'm on the Pixel 6 now, and I love it. Edit, since so many of you are asking, OnePlus used to be set on being a phone with flagship specs and features, but with a mid-tier price. To do this, they cut costs in advertising, IPE water slash dust resistance ratings, etc.6 Point the 6T is a perfect example for this. On release it had a Snapdragon 845, a great camera system, AMOLED display and its main feature with the on-screen fingerprint sensor, seen in a ton of Android flagships today, and it was $550. Nowadays the company is just another Android flagship phone maker. They do still have budget options such as their Nord Linux, but they suck. 
Oh and they took away the alert slider which tbh was the only thing really keeping me with oneplus aside from oxygenos which is also now gone. What happened to oneplus? Just got my first one, 10 pro, and I'm happy with the phone, but underwhelmed by the camera. Haven't read up on the history of oneplus. No real web browser choice. Apple requires that all browsers for iOS distributed through the App Store use WebKit as an engine, which means that whatever their names, they are all in fact just themed Safari. Firefox plus uBlock Origin plus Privacy Badger. Until I can run that in iOS, it's not an option. Edit since this post is getting more attention than it probably deserves, I'm not looking for alternatives to these tools in the iOS ecosystem, I'm looking for exactly these tools. It's what I also use on desktop, I like these tools, I like consistency. The OG question was what's keeping you from switching to iOS? And this is my personal answer. Yep at free YouTube through Firefox is great. Edit for those wondering I use extension new block origin on my phone and personal computer. For phone I also used background video play fix 1.2 extension. This will also block ads on most web pages as well. I like changing my ringtones to stupid TV themes from the 60s. Wait can you not customize your ring on iPhones? You can. As well as for text alerts. It's just not obvious how to do it. I use the ringtone from Metal. Gear Solid is mine. Comfort mostly. Always had an Android phone and never felt the need to change as I'm used to the setup, options and layout. I have an iPhone for work related reasons. I don't regularly use it, but when I do have to, it feels alien. So I 100% relate to the comfort comment. Also, I really don't care for the look and feel of iOS. I hated my Apple work phone. If I peffed my phone in the car and wanted to take a picture of something interesting, my only options were email or text it to myself as Apple refused to allow their devices to connect to an Android. Just fucking get over yourselves and join the rest of the market already. I would actually consider an iPhone if they didn't pull these stupid stunts in the name of exclusion. My Android phone has been to the bottom of a river without a case and I'm still using it two years later. Same. My S8 Plus was in a lake for three hours before we fished it out and it was working like nothing ever happened. I put my Pixel 2 on top of my car while buckling my son in the car and forgot to grab it. Ended up flying off my car while I was doing 65 miles per hour. Husband saw it on his way to work about a week later and the case I had on it was destroyed but the phone still worked and was still in excellent condition and this was a week after heavy rain too. Gaming emulators. You can pretty much emulate everything. From northeasts to PS2, Gamma Cube using an Android phone or tablet, pretty much a mini switch, or if your phone supports desktop mode or me out, you can also use your phone to play a game on a large TV or monitor. Yeah, nobody takes my trusty Pokemon games from me. Edit, apparently you can play on iPhone too. Kudos to you slash Koenigspiel for pointing it out first. Edit too, since a lot of people are asking this, I'm adding this for visibility. My trusty friend you slash Koenigspiel pointed out that you can get ROMs from archive.org. For GBA emulation, you can use my boy or my boy free. If you're an adult earning your own money, I'd recommend buying the full version since it adds to the immersion. Then you just select the ROMs from your hard drive and you can have fun. I may have said that I used Bemulator, which I'm not sure exists. I used my boy. I like my freedom. Android users are the admin of the phone. In contrast, iPhone user feels like they are just a user. Also, I don't want to upgrade my ecosystem, PC, tab, and accessories just to be compatible slash access to iPhone. That's where I am. When I use an iOS device, I have to use it the way Apple wants me to use it. I hate how the home screen works, and I can't do anything to change it edit to answer a lot of people, I'm basing this off using my iPad, but from what I've seen and used, it seems to be the same on iPhones. To clarify, it's more that I don't have access to an app drawer. I hate that the home screen pages are the only way to see all my apps in alphabetical order, and it's only in alphabetic order until I install another app. I can reset the home screen, but if I've added widgets or done other organization things, I have to redo all that. 
And no the app library is not a solution. Once again Apple gives you no control in the categories or what categories apps are put in, unless I'm missing something. So many times I have to try to guess what category an app will be in. It pisses me off, because it's the Apple way of we know better than you, stupid on Android, I have my app drawer, that gives me access to all my apps at the flick of a thumb, so I don't need to have all my apps on my home screen pages, it's such a little thing, that would be so simple to have, but Apple won't do it. Good Apple products are expensive, and I don't have money like that. The phones are too fragile in my experience, and tend to break pretty easily. The chargers for the phones and iPad are completely unusable on any other devices vs my Android phone chargers also charge my school Chromebook, wireless e-phones and speaker, and my e-reader and tablet, not to mention my entire family's devices. I don't like the way Safari looks. At all. I've never liked it and never will. I've considered buying an iPad, just because I'm an artist and as much as I dislike Apple, their digital art game is pretty fire. But as I mentioned in my first point, Apple is expensive. I ain't got that kind of money. Fr I also do digital art. Just my two cents. I own both Samsung Note plus S Pen, and also iPad plus Apple Pencil. Both S Pen and Apple Pencil have different feels. S Pen wins it for me, since they feel a lot closer to how my Wacom Pen feels. The nub feels a lot more accurate to draw on, and they're lighter compared to my Apple Pencil. Plus not having to charge it every time is a big plus. Also Infinite Painter, Procreate, for some reason Infinite is better, in handling brushes with opacity. I suggest you to give both options a try, before making a purchase. Reasons, in no particular order. Feel more comfortable with Android. Better UI, according to me. Needlessly expensive, including accessories. Better and cheaper alternatives in Android, according to me. Cheaper Play Store. Android is easily accessible. Easy repair facility for Android phones. I'm probably missing a few. Again, it's my preference and opinion. I got an iPhone for work and I saw it partly as an opportunity to thoroughly try it. And after a week I realized oh, I really do just hate the UI navigation. I even tried to research if there were any customizations or anything. Nope. That's just the way it is. Specifically I don't like how back works. Give me a universal back button or an edge gesture for back that works on both sides. Edit. Added a few words for clarity. Edit too. Or give me the option to waste screen space on a back button slash set the gestures to be whatever. The end. Thanks for watching.